I'm Amy Goodman. This is Democracy Now! Yes! The Los Angeles-based Chicano band Las Cafeteras joined us here in New York. The band's been described by The Los Angeles Times as a uniquely Angelino mishmash of punk, hip-hop, beat music, cumbia and rock. This year, they released their new album, called Tastes Like L.A. Here, they're performing their hit single, If I Was President, in our studio. It begins with musician Denise Carlos singing in Spanish, If I Was President, Honestly, If I Was President, For My People. Si fuera presidente, honestamente, si fuera presidente, para mi gente, si fuera presidente, honestamente, presidente, para mi gente. President I'd I how to roll up my sleeves as I face the congregation. First thing I do is free education. And every third period, we practice meditation. Every third period, we practice meditation like a brown Robin Hood. I'd take from the rich and I'd give to the poor so my little sister ain't gotta be hungry no more. And my first lady would be my mom, cause she smacked me at the first out of drone strikes and dropping bombs. And I'd free all my poor black and brown kids that got caught up in three strikes. And when they get out, they get free bikes so they could ride to the future, not to their past. Go to the store, get some chips. That's when Las Cafeteras. I, I spoke to two of its six know. members, the two co-founders of the band, know, Hector Flores and Denise Carlos. I began by asking Hector Flores to talk about their hit song, If I Was President, on their new album, Taste Like L.A. I think in the left, we're always talking about what we're against. Mm -hmm. And for us, we really want to reimagine and really think what we're for. Because the day is coming, the day is here, where we need to push forward an agenda of what we're for. And mm -hmm. that's what the song was really about. Like, what would I do? You know, what would I push for? And actually, three months leading up to the recording, I went to, like, Food for Less. Uh, <laughs> and every time I went to go buy food, I would ask the workers. I said, hey, if you were president for a day, what was the first thing you would do? And basically, their response is... Or, kind, or the lyrics to the lyrics that I wrote for my piece. Mm -hmm. They always said education. They said, man, you know, I'd, I'd get my cousin out of, out of jail because he shouldn't be in there for, for weed and like things like that. And that's sort of what we put into the song. I burnt tobacco at the opening, send thanks and prayers to Creator and our living bees. Then I'd sit you down with your abuelita, rewrite history so our kids could see where we came from and a new destiny. From Flint to Cali, water flowing pure and free. My department of peace will melt guns into bike racks, budget cuts to corporate kickbacks. If I was president, will there still be drama? Takes a village, tickle our generational trauma. So shake your spine, put your hands up high. We got a different kind of party in the White House tonight. If I was president, hey, what would I do if I was president? Hey, I'd ask you if And you Las Cafeteras, the name of your band, what does it mean? Um, it comes from a space called the East Side Cafe in um, Northeast LA, and it is a space that had um, this wild imagination about uh, self-determination and creating a world where many worlds exist. And this is really the, the narrative and the teachings of the Zapatistas in Chiapas, Mexico, um, of not responding to a government that doesn't identify or recognize them, but really taking it upon themselves to govern themselves in a way that they find um, uh, holds dignity. And so, for us, in those days, um, it was a space that really, really gave us, again, the imagination of more. Um, how do we uh, build a world where we fit and where we're powerful and where our voice is heard? Um, and so, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful root of, of how we, as Las Cafeteras, started playing music, um, where we never grew up playing music. And it was, for, for many of us, first time that we even sang out loud in front of people. Yeah. So, introduce this song for us which everyone knows a form of This Land Is Your Land and why you chose to put it on the album. So This Land Is Your Land was written by Woody Guthrie. And when he wrote it, he actually omitted verses because he wrote it during the McCarthy era. And so we were asked to write a song. You know, I remember the, an organization asked us to write like a, an American song, like, mm -hmm. a, and like an old school. And they said, well, we didn't really want to. 
And so we actually went back and said, what, what songs exist, like traditional folk songs that really speak to our identity? Mm -hmm. And we found this land is your land. It was actually Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings. We saw her, we saw her example, and it was beautiful. And then we said, well, why don't we do it our own? We did a Mexican Zapatista funk version. <laughs> this is Las Cafeteras singing This Land is Your Land. This land was made for you and me As I was walking I saw the sun that ran on that side And it said no crossing And on the other side it said nothing This land was made for you and me Oh, this land Which land? That's Las Capoteras in our Democracy Now! studio singing This Land Is Your Land, and it's one of the songs in Taste Like L.A. Denise Flores, why did you call the album Taste Like L.A.? And why the cover, which is um, a food truck? You know, a lot of um, places that we play ask, what genre do you play? And um, we don't fit in any specific box. We don't fit in a genre. We are... So LA flavored, um, and that's the only way we would know how to describe it. Um, we grew up listening to hip hop, norteño, rancheras, cumbia, punk, goth, you know, um, and all of us come from so many different traditions and experiences. We're Chicanos, we're Mexican, but as Hector always says, that just means that you're mixed and you come from all kinds of places. And so, for us, we really wanted to introduce ourselves back into the musical world um, as just a band from L.A. playing everything and anything um, and not fitting into a box, because as people, we don't fit into a box, right? So the census is really complicated for us. <laughs> um, and we have this food truck, um, because in L.A. it's, you know, food justice and, um, and even vendor rights you know, are a big deal. Um, I think L.A. is uh, one of the biggest um, cities in the country that don't have established policies that protect uh, street vendors. Hector, can you talk about the food? truck that was turned over just a few days ago. The vi video went viral when a guy turned over this man's truck. There's this man who flipped over a, a, a corn truck, where a man was selling corn on the street because he didn't want to move. And I feel that speaks to the, how I think a lot of our communities feel about street vendors. But that's really basically reflecting the fact that policies don't, pre uh, policies don't protect street vendors. So for us, like the ice cream truck, the elotero uh, man, uh, the paletera woman, folks who are making a living selling food need to be protected. They're trying to raise their families, live a life of dignity. And so that's why on the front of our CD, it's, a, it's an ice cream truck. You know, that's, that's L.A. for us. Mm -hmm. It's people working, doing what they have to, selling food to raise, you know, their families and have a, a, a life of dignity. Let's go to Tiempos de Amor. Talk about this song, the origins of it, Denise. So, Tiempos de Amor, um, when a certain person uh, was up on a podium um, as a candidate for president, um, speaking about Mexican people, um, saying that we are rapists and we're drug dealers and we're dangerous and some of us are, are good. You don't like um, to say President Trump's name? Uh, I would rather not, although um, I'm okay other people saying it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so the lyrics that I wrote for Tiempos de Amor, um, I went back into my parents' story and I went back into my family's story and everybody I know, most of the people that I know are first generation born in the U.S. And, um, and the root of the, of the reason why, why a lot of our parents left uh, the comfort of their home and family was because of love. They loved the children that they didn't have so much that they sacrificed really their lives. And, um, and I just wanted to remind people that, that the root of all this pain and the root of all this struggle is love. And, and we can't live without it. And, um, and it's so easy to, to, um, to criminalize people and to dehumanize because they're breaking laws. And we forget that laws aren't always, you know, um, dignified and compassionate and understanding and just. Um, and just. And so, we, I mean, we just had a truck full of people found in, in Texas. Um, Texas, and 10 of those folks had passed away. And so, I, what I saw in the reaction to a lot of the article was, 
well, they were illegal. They deserve it. And, um, and it breaks my heart that we are in a time where, where people care more about laws and policies than actual people and beating hearts. Tiempos de amor means times of love. Yes. Can you share the first verse, the first verse with us in English, of since course. you sing it in Spanish? Um, it says, I would cross whichever, whatever river um, to be close to you because um, I feel an emptiness um, beating in my heart. Let's go to Tiempos de Amor. This is Las Cafeteras. This is Democracy Now! Before we end, when you came back into the United States from Canada on this tour, as you head off to London, then back to Canada, you came through New Haven. Talk about why. We came through—we had a show in New Haven, Connecticut, and coming into New Haven, I received a text message from, a, from the uh, Connecticut Immigrant Rights Organization saying there's a woman in sanctuary, and her name was Nuri Chavarria, and they were having a visual that night for her. Uh, and we found out, and they asked us to come to the vigil and play. And we found out that there's a woman, Nuri Chavarria, who was to be deported last Thursday. And instead of showing up for deportation, she went to sanctuary. She uh, uh, went to sanctuary in a church. And so we went and we met Nuri, and we played at the vigil. And the next day, we were able to go to the church, meet her, hear her story. She has four children. She has She's four, been here for four almost four US born of children. Century. Four U.S. born years. children, mm -hmm. over 20 years in the United States, no criminal record. And, the, and every year since 1999, she's been going uh, into court to get a year sort of um, a relief. Um, extension. Extension. Mm -hmm. and, but last month, she went in, and instead of giving her a year extension, they put a, an ankle bracelet on her, and they told her, you're going to be deported a in a month. A shackle on her, on her ankle. Mm -hmm. And they told her in front of her 9-year-old daughter. And instead of showing up to court to be deported, she went into sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And so when we learned about that, we said, we have to go. We have to make it happen. And we were able to meet her, and we actually did a video in support and asking people to call Department of Homeland Security. And I got a text message two days ago that she has been re uh, she received um, what is the word? Clemency? A stay of deport—a uh, stay, uh, stay relief from deportation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For a year. For a year. federal judge has asked ICE to re-examine her yes. case. Yes, yes. And, and that is in part to the organizations in New Haven, Connecticut, doing that beautiful work. So when people say, like, you know, when, when you're asked to help and call ICE, it works. What did you play outside of the church? Outside of the church, we played Tiempos de Amor. Mm -hmm. La Bamba we, Rebelde. La Bamba Rebelde. And if I was president. And if I was president outside. And it was a banging show <laughs> in an empty parking lot right next to the church. So this is interesting, what you do when you go from city to city. Can you explain the kind of theme? So we're, we're, we're movement organizers. We're organizers before we're musicians. So when we go into new towns, we identify who Who's doing work in that town? Mm -hmm. Who's doing? Who, what is what is the issue that needs to be elevated? We went to um, Burlington, Vermont, and we met with uh, dairy uh, dairy farm workers, the who, whole migrant justice migrant group. justice organizations, and we found out that there's a lot of injustice against dairy farm workers. We had no idea. We invited them to our show. You know, they were able to table, share their work, and uh, that. That's the work that we do, and we do shows called Beats, um, Beats Not Borders or Beats and Bridges, where we go into different neighborhoods, different cities. Mm -hmm. We invite the local DJ, we invite the organizations, you know, uh, and basically we have these banging parties <laughs> and we get down with justice, but we elevate and connect people in the neighborhood to the movements. And I think that's the work we want to do as musicians. Those are two of the co-founders of Las Cafeteras. 
Hector Flores and Denise Carlos. Their new album is Taste Like L.A. You can watch their full extended interview and performances in the Democracy Now! studio at democracynow.org. And that does it for our broadcast. A special fond farewell to our outgoing video fellow, Andre Lewis. Andre, we wish you the very best, and thank you so much for your contributions and your work here at Democracy Now! You made us so much better. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Dina Guzder, Nareen Sheikh, Carla Wills, Laura Gottesdiener, Sam Alkoff, John Hamilton, Ravi Karan, Hani Massoud, Sharina Nadura, Andre Lewis, Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Nagara, and Paul Huckabee, our engineers. Special thanks to Becca Staley, Julie Crosby, uh, Hugh Grand, David Prude, Ariel Boone, Vesta Godars. You can go to our website at democracynow.org to read the transcripts, get our video and audio podcasts, and you can text the word Democracy Now! one word to 66866 and sign up for our daily digest and news headlines. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much.